Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Fei's World. Welcome to my channel. And in this video today, I want to talk to you about my most recent film distribution experience with Distribber. But more importantly, some of the what I think is the number one sage advice I could give to any film makers, especially independent filmmakers who are just starting out. And by the way, if you don't know who Distribber is, they are an um, industry recognized at least used to be aggregator. Years ago, Netflix actually appointed them to be one of the recognized or certified um, distribution companies to distribute your films. And years before that, you used to be able to submit an online form for Hulu, for Netflix to distribute your independent film. Those days are long gone. So these days you do need to work with someone through a separate channel to submit your films except for very few exceptions and Amazon Video Direct is one of them and other independent platforms that are a lot smaller. But, you know, I, I want to just say that as an independent filmmaker, the life is not easy and I'm not a traditional filmmaker in the sense that this is what I do for a living. I don't. In 2018, when I produced my film, that happens to be after I had a really good year business-wise in 2017, I had, I had a lot of savings for from my business and I decided to pour all of that into producing a film. And in case you're wondering why we decided to do that, since very few people have managed to make money from their films, and it's still true today, especially if it's a documentary or whatnot, um, is because I came from a podcasting background and a marketing background. So I thought for the first time, and I, if I have the courage and, and also the resources and the budget to kind of bring my brand to of a more visual and video level. And video production is something that we already specialize in as part of Face World LLC, but I never for a second thought I would be sitting in front of the camera and to be able to do even this, you know, for YouTube, uh, needless to say, to produce my own documentary. And I really think because of that experience in 2018, it really triggered my strong interest, almost be becomes an obsession to produce videos on YouTube and be able to connect with you guys. But here's the issue. After we concluded pretty much post-production, um, which means we edited the film, the documentary, which is a five-part docu-series, my team and I were just thinking, we're just gonna make the docu-series free for people to watch. But then we paused for a second because in order to do that, we're giving up on uh, festival submissions, at least for most of them, we are giving up on all these network distributions, including places like Netflix and Hulu, Amazon Prime, and a bunch of other channels that you may or may not have heard of. So then we said, okay, let's do some research in the market and see who's legitimate and submit our film there. And I came across a lot of different websites and somehow I stumbled upon Distribber as an outlet. So I got in touch with them, watched a bunch of videos. And, and I also didn't really want to bother uh, people that I know who are professional filmmakers to kind of waste their time and, and consult them because they may or may not be part of the, the process that I was in. So I did my research and I decided to go with Distribber. Now, there are a lot of videos floating around as I'm recording this video in October 2019 to detail their experiences, and it's all very, very traumatic, and I feel like I don't really need to repeat a lot of what they said. I do agree with a lot of that, and my personal experience perhaps wasn't as traumatic as a lot of these uh, filmmakers just because I got lucky. My film was nowhere near the door or the entry point of these networks, you know, distribu distributors business model proven to be something that simply didn't work as of 2019 and too bad they didn't really uh, inform other people about it. And fortunately I am one of the many, many victims, um, but I was able to recoup my money, get my money back. And that's my sage advice of the day is that you must for any services, consulting service or services that cost a lot of money. In this case for us, it was more than $6,000. We're able to get every penny back because I used a trusted and a high quality credit card. This one happens to be Chase Reserve Card. Um, so it's called the Chase Sapphire Reserve. I'm gonna include a link 
to this credit card. I am not an affiliate. In fact, they don't even give you or ask you to be an affiliate. They used to have a program like that, but not currently. And I still want to recommend that card or any credit cards that you feel strongly and maybe you have used or has, you know, have been able to dispute charges that are illegal or, you know, false charges that they gave you satisfying customer service. That's the type of the credit card you want to use when you purchase is a more significant service or a product. It doesn't matter if you're getting a new iMac um, or at the Apple store, or you're paying for services such as Distriber or other consulting services. If these companies don't deliver their services as they promised, then you're able to get your money back. So my experience in this case with Chase Reserve Card is I gave them a call. I was quite traumatized at the time. I found out very late that night that Distriber was silently going out of business. I joined this super helpful Facebook group, which I'm going to link below. And a lot of people, a lot of these way more experienced filmmakers were giving me a wonderful advice. Literally within two days, I switched from being very upset to finding very feasible solutions and being able to begin submitting my film to these platforms, which I'll talk about in a second as well. And being able to provide additional tutorials, especially if you're in the same shoes as I am. So I called Chase Reserve and I have been um, their member. I've, I've had the credit card for more than a year at, at that point. And by the way, this happened in September of 2019, so not so long ago. I called them at 10.30. Apparently their support works 24 seven. That's another benefit. If your credit card offers that as well, I was able to report the charges right away and they were able to assist me. And I could tell that people were, at the time, uh, people who answered the call are from North America. So which means it was really late for them as well. But they were very kind, they listened to me. They gave me the number I should be calling the very next day, so I did. Next day, I called the dispute department and the gentleman on the other side of the line was taking notes very carefully, repeating them back to me. And because this one is very specific to filmmaking, to documentaries, I was able to correct some of the things such as when he said, oh, is this social media related? I said, no, 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 this is related to network distribution. So this way I can be sure that he took notes that are accurate to my description. And I was a little concerned at the end anyway. Um, number one, the good news is they were able to credit me back right away. So they were able to give $6,000 worth of credits temporarily put back onto my account. I was able to see it and I asked, hey, but you know, I think the guy's name was Michael. Hey, Michael, what if distributor or, you know, in this case, your vendor won't even reply. And he said, well, that's the best case scenario because then they can actually close the case and there's no further investigation. But if they decide to fly back, then they need to prove evidence as to, you know, when was my series submitted to these networks? You know, whether the procedures they took, how they communicated with me um, in order to keep that money that they charged me for. This was back in May. For me, you know, sometimes there's a cutoff. So, uh, there was an initial payment that was outside of, I believe, the 60 day uh, period where you can very simply dispute the charge. But I had one of the charges that was outside of the 60 day period and they were able to help me anyway. But you do have to, in this case for me, to call up the credit card company and be able to dispute the charge as opposed to doing it uh, automatically and or, or for me to do it directly on the website. So. That would be huge, absolutely huge for you to consider putting these charges on a credit card. Obviously, you know, in some cases that requires you to have a higher limit for your credit card. Um, but if that's worth investigating for you, definitely look into it before you write a personal check, definitely before you pay cash. So I hope you find this helpful. And um, if you're an independent filmmaker, you know, nothing more challenging than making films. In my book, it, there's just so much that goes into it. Your creativity, your time on the road, your time away from your family, but you're telling very important stories and I wanna support you and I highly, highly respect you for doing that. And thank you for watching this video. If you find this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. See you in the next video.